guest uh, tonight. This is uh, Sh uh, Shana, 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 Boken. Back. I was a school teacher. <laughs> tonight um, from the what I have been through. These survivors and the caregivers, they have to told you tonight about the extreme surgeries we go through. Sometimes the surgery is not even an option about the chemotherapy, the radiation, and then there's the recovery after that. And that in itself can be years in the making before we even feel somewhat back to ourselves. We all know that the survival rates are horrible. We all know the statistics. And any one of us here know that we don't even like to read those. They're kind of a stab in our back, if you like to say. Um, I really despise these. So tonight, I want to share with you how these statistics can be turned around. I want to show you how important it is to focus on positive influences around us that can make us to make this journey one of hope. How we all are connected in everybody's life. There are five pieces to my puzzle tonight and they have played an amazing role during this time of pancreatic cancer. The first one, Amy, if you wouldn't mind coming up and putting, putting the first one up. This is for all the caregivers at Mayo. And this could be any of our caregivers, any from Baptist, say this is here tonight or from any institution you've received your treatment. Um, they truly took it seriously when I was not feeling well. For two and a half years I had my symptoms overlooked and it was not until I went to Mayo and at that time they were having these commercials where you know, find your answer at Mayo. Well, I found my answer. Um, they wasted no time in getting me diagnosed and scheduled me for the surgery that absolutely saved my life. They came up with an ambitious but balanced plan for chemo and radiation that I could live with and survive. I was guided to Mayo for a reason. These caregivers are 100% professional, but they are also 100% compassionate. They did whatever it took to come up with the best possible outcome. And I stand before you today cancer free. Samantha, this is my daughter. If she would come up and put the next puzzle piece, and that represents my family. My family has provided constant caring love from day one of my journey. From the dad, for the time of my father-in-law feeding me in my bed when I didn't even realize that I was being fed, I couldn't feed myself, to my mom staying with me for weeks after surgery during the day when I can't do for myself, and she did. And for my wonderful husband, that he would go to work 9 to 12 hours a day and come home and tend to me. When I was too weak to help myself, there they all were. Even for the unglamorous personal care parts, they were there. My cancer created a new normal for my family, and I have always been the problem solver. The one, two they go to, what do we do, honey, with this? Mom, where's this? I need this paid now. Mom, can I have a check for school? There were so many things that I had to hand over because I was no longer able to do it. And I had to stop and focus on me. They graciously took over and helped me through that process and all the everyday demands of just getting better and recovering. My cancer has been a surprising source of joy though and laughter to my family. 
you know, we all, some, many of us suffer from chemo brain. Yes, that is a true thing. It's just not made up. Those times, even I've caught myself now mispronouncing words or standing, seeing the word in my head, but nothing comes out. And it's just not only a senior moment when you get up out of your chair and you think, why did I even get up? <laughs> so in those awkward moments, my daughter has nicknamed me Squirrel. <laughs> so whenever those situations happen, she just says, Squirrel! <laughs> and we just laugh and pass it off like, there's no big deal, it's all common. So it's made us laugh, believe it or not. For all my family that's here tonight, I do not take you for granted. For my mom, my sister-in-law Kim, my brother-in-law Ronnie, my mom and dad, my father and father-in-law and my mother-in-law, my daughter Samantha, whom that was my main purpose when I was diagnosed to say, I just want to see her graduate from high school. We've got one more year. <laughs> and my wonderful husband. I could not have done this without you. Also, to all my family in Ohio and West Virginia, Virginia, see here I go again, that has prayed for me. It means a lot just to say you can do it and press on. It's not a Melanie. They're going to add another piece to the puzzle tonight, and that's friends. Can all my friends raise your hand that are here tonight? Thank you, guys. <laughs> When faced with the fight of my life, I quickly learned what friends were in it for the long haul and why they were placed in my life for the first place. When I got the courage to stand up and face my diagnosis, new friends rose up and stood alongside of me. They carried me through great darkness and they kept me going. Sadly though, and I think we just don't mention it though, there's some that just aren't strong enough to go through the battle with us. But the ones that choose to stand by our side, they are warriors in their own right. I've always appreciated the big things that have been done for me, but you know what? My friends have shown me the little things that really make the difference. Providing meals, driving me to appointments, even taking notes for me when I could absorb all the information coming at me. It turns out the little things are sometimes the biggest things of all. My friends have taken on a deeper meaning now. We laugh, we cry, and we pray together. If I hadn't had this illness, I may have missed out. The biggest treasure is waiting there for me. Although, although my treatment has ended, their support has not. My friendships met many needs, and they feed my soul. To all my friends, I love you with all my heart, and I couldn't do it, and I still can't do it without you. <laughs> Angie, if you would come up. This represents the fourth piece of the puzzle, and that's the Pancan family, which I am new to. It's a source of a vital connection to clinical trials, support, and fundraising initiative for this crucial research of pancreatic cancer. And James, thank you for being our affiliate leader and for directing us in the, what needs to be done and keeping us focused. Now that I've healed medically, the passion of the Northeast Florida Pancan family has inspired me to take up their mission and be an advocate of its work and a cheerleader for the caregivers the patients and families it serves. Events like this one tonight, Advocacy, Advocacy Day on Chap Itch at Capitol Hill in June and Purple Stride in September will show that we are not down for the count because of pancreatic cancer. Our fight has only just begun. We resolve to live each day to the fullest without regrets, with our hearts set on waging hope, raising awareness, awareness and finding a cure so to all the Pan Can family, thank you so much for your years of hard work and for allowing me just to step in here. The last piece of my puzzle has been in place since my battle began.
Notice it's in the center, the piece that joins the others into a whole. I spell the word peace, not as P-I-E-C-E, -E, but as peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, on this one because it represents my faith in my God. He orchestrated my whole journey, prepared my future for it before the cancer even bloomed inside my body. He has heard my every cry, remembered every prayer, and dried every tear from my face. He has shown me his compassion and taught me that I must show it to others as well. He has lit my path so my heart would not fail, will not fail, and keeps me from all fear. He has shown me that there's life during and after this horrible fight. And yes, he even has given me laughter to share and given me dreams to pursue. And yes, he directed me to Pan Can because he knew that not only would my Pan Can family wage hope with me personally, but inspire me to reach out to others who are in the trenches of the same battle. He has sustained me, sustained my faith, and has made his presence ever real to me. From my diagnosis, through my surgery, having treatments, and even through recovery. When I felt utterly alone, he's drawn me even closer. He is faithful, and because of him, my puzzle is now complete. A piece may jiggle or get out of sorts every now and then, but all of the people, these people, these pieces represent, have a specific place in my puzzle, and each one brings their own beauty to my life. Um, each of one of you should have received a puzzle piece when you came in. You were wondering, why is this weird lady giving me this? And she's not telling me why. Well, as you wear this puzzle piece or display it, let it be a conversation starter. And tell someone about Pan Can, who you're supporting, and how they can help, and how it affects you. Whether you are a cancer survivor, a family member, a caregiver or friend, or if you are mourning someone who has passed on, you are a priceless piece of someone's puzzle. We all bring something to the big picture when we unite for a common purpose. As you leave here tonight, leave knowing that you may be the very piece that someone is waiting for. Thank you.